And I'm TJ Rogan from Overmind.com. We're here with Secret Revolution. Say hi. Hey, what's up? I said say hi. I'm Brooklyn. <laughs> say hi. Hi. Who are you? Roxy Dange. Hi, I'm August Taylor. What's going on? I'm Roman. What do you guys have planned for this year? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we currently have a West Coast tour being planned that's a secret, um, and that's all I can talk about with that. What's the biggest secret this band has? Okay, well, I can't give our songwriting secrets away, because that would just be blasphemy. Give the good ones. Um, the secret in reality is that we're all actually friends, we all actually get along, we all hang out, and we all think each other like brothers, so I think that's going to go a long way for this band. Truth. So getting ready for a concert, who takes it long to do their hair? Roman. Easily. Roman. Roman? No. Yeah. Yeah, Roman definitely. Take us, through, no. take us through the process from start, because it doesn't look like that when you wake up. I've seen you in the morning. <laughs> well, you know, it's just like simple. You just like wake up and do this, and that's it. Yeah, he says that, but it's not the case whatsoever. He runs around like a headless chicken for the first half an hour. Then where's the where's the Joe? Where's the Joe? Who has straighteners? Who has straighteners? <laughs> Running around. Doing all this. Then he spends like half an hour straightening it yeah. perfectly, making sure it puts all the gel in there, spikes it straight up, and then he'll stand in the mirror for another 10 minutes being like. <laughs> and you know what? It looks fantastic, Roman. Fantastic. Yeah, it, it does look good. Whereas I know for a fact that me and Brooklyn just kind of look in the mirror and go, done. Yeah, my hair is completely naturally just like this. I don't have to do anything to it. It's, it's a good life. <laughs> That's a secret, by the way. I'd probably take longer than Roman, but I don't want to get into my whole process because that also is a secret. It takes you like 40 minutes to get ready for a show. No comment. Even before an interview, oh my god, my hair looks like shit. It does. <laughs> Every Overmind interview, my hair is going to look like S. So who stinks up the tour van the most? I have bad feet. <laughs> <laughs> the last time we played at Tom Lee, I, I, I came in. <laughs> I was kind of late and they were like, oh, there you are. And they walked in and I, I had taken my shoes off and my socks and I kind of cleared the whole place out. And like every other band, like Seize New Attack was playing the same show and like they were there and they really were not appreciative of the foul stench coming from. But I Febreze them. I Febreze them for this show, literally. Every European morning. shower works every time. Everybody came back stage. Like everyone that was in the dressing room would come in and be like, what the F is that smell? And we were like, Brooklyn's feet. We used to it. If you guys could ask yourself a question, what would you guys ask yourself? Where would you really be if you didn't have what I, what you have now? Where would you be if you didn't have what you have now? I know that's deep, and we were just giggling our faces off and bums, but yeah, that's what I would ask myself. And what would be your answer? Sorry, TJ. To be honest, I would have to pull a comeback to me. <laughs> it would take me a while to think of the actual answer. But yeah, if I could look at myself, uh, that would be the question I'd ask, because I really don't know. This has changed my life in ways that only these three know. So. I would have to say, my question to myself would be, why would I rock out so much for a set when I have some sort of clinical joint pain that's causing me agony right now? And yet nothing stopped me. I can answer I'm that gonna for you. I'll answer that question for you. Because you're awesome. What would you ask yourself in Spanish? Oh, wow, in Spanish. <laughs> you just got back from Mexico. You've been having trouble speaking English all night. And I, know, I know, I know, I know. I know, like... ¿Por qué como tantos tacos? August. Yes. I heard you go with the ladies. I don't know what girls are. How do you get girls? You get what? I... Harry Potter style. Describe this band in one word. Shite. Cerveza! Cerveza? So you guys recently went down to Warped in... Yes. California, I believe. Yes. What was it like going down there to see all those bands? It was actually awesome. Uh, Roman and I went, uh, and they actually found us on Twitter, and they found that we were coming down for the Warp Tour in California, and they said, you know, film your trip, and uh, they're making a movie, which is just basically fan footage um, from the fans' perspective, and so we filmed our whole trip from Vancouver. No planning. <laughs> Shit got weird, and we got it all on video. And uh, it was pretty cool. It was my first time actually seeing Go Radio live, which uh, Roman kind of told me about, but I got to see them live. And I was pretty impressed. And we had these backstage passes from doing an interview with the Warps. And we got to go to the, we weren't even probably supposed to be back there, but this backstage area with all the rock stars eating catered food. And uh, I look over and friggin' Jason Lancaster sitting beside me. 
And like, I went home from California, I got really into Go Radio and became obsessed with Jason Lancaster. He became my songwriting like mentor or whatever. So I'm really pissed now that I didn't turn on him. I was like. God, they like totally wrote a song about me. What is your favorite major label band? Angels and Airwaves. Since I was a kid, it was Blink. And then when I heard Angels and Airwaves, that was just it. I never heard anything like it. And I fangirl over his voice and all that. Yeah, Angels is just something I never heard before, and the rhythms and melodies are my guru, essentially, so. Are they better or worse than Blink-182? Billions of light years better. <laughs> Sorry, I think Angels and Airwaves tops anything Blink ever did. A day to remember. Why? Because they're awesome. Everybody that likes pop punk likes metal. They found a way to do it perfectly, and they're super heavy and super poppy, and I just think that they have created such a unique market, and they've done well because of it, and it's just from straight touring. They worked really hard, so nothing but respect for those guys, and they just keep releasing gold albums as far as I'm concerned, so. Decent. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm gonna have to stick with one of the hometown bands and go with Bring Me The Horizon. Mostly because I've always loved them from the that very first EP kind of thing and just really enjoyed watching their progression to their new style and just stuck around and loved every second of it. I <laughs> oh my god, okay, okay. I would have to say uh, Jello Card or Story of the Year. Jello Card? Yeah, did you say Jello Card? Jello Card. Jello Card. California, we were on Ocean Avenue in, uh, where was that? Santa Monica? and they, they have their hit song, Ocean Avenue. And then we found out it was about a place in Florida. We were just like getting drunk and singing Ocean Avenue the whole time, not really knowing that it wasn't that Ocean Avenue, so. So what has been your most fun moment together? I, I, I think I can speak for everyone and not be the, the lead singer douche answer when I say, uh, we wrote a new song, we're working on a new song, and uh, we were in the jam space one day and <clears throat> Augie came up with this cool chord progression and it was, I think the first song we ever truly, like, me and Rox wrote, like, the record together, and we knew and we found gold. And we were like, holy, you know, this is insane. And then we had All Night with Roman, but I think it was for all of us when Augie came in and we worked on this new one we're working on. I think every time we play it, we're just, yeah. it's four people now. It's not two, it's not three, it's finally done. And that, to me, I think has been the best. Because we're, like, sitting on it, just like, me and Rox, you're like, what are we doing for the vocals? Because it's, it's awesome, it's fun. It has no vocals, but just the instruments. It's it's going to be the best song we've ever written. So we're trying to take our time, and you know the vocals usually come pretty quick. But we're taking our time with this one and yeah. really crafting something special because we think it's got that sort of. What's your favorite thing about Brooklyn Chase? Oh, <laughs> that's a hard one. Uh, she's an awesome musician and awesome friend. Brooklyn Chase, what's your favorite thing about August Taylor? August Taylor. Um, his ability to delegate productively and positively in our band. He's probably the biggest mom out of all of us. He's just always caring and always understanding to everything and just such a joy to be around. He's complete, he completed the puzzle and he works in ways like Vaseline. August Taylor, what's your favorite thing about Roxy Danger? The muscles, definitely the muscles. <laughs> Flex those bad boys. Show, Come on, show, show them. More to me, bro. <laughs> Roxy is probably one of my best friends. Well, actually, the entire band is my best friends, and I just love spending time with each and every single one of them, especially Roxy. And uh, I think that's part of what makes this band work. It's just the fact that we love hanging out outside of the band as well. And Roxy, what's your favorite thing about yourself? Oh my God. Um, about myself, legitimately, I think I have a good ability to see things from other people's perspectives. So, I mean, it, we try to. You know, we all get along, but sometimes we have disagreements. But I'm, when I'm talking to somebody, I'm thinking, how is this coming across to them through their minds? So I try not to be too much of a dick and, uh, you know, learn from mistakes and everything. So I'm, uh, I try to keep my ego in check. And, uh, yeah, that's like a bunch of things. <laughs> <laughs> this is Liam from The Perfect Trend. So, Brooklyn Chase, I have a 100% serious question to ask you. If Roxy Danger got in a fight with Alan Columbus, who would win? Oh my god, that's so Whew. To the top. You know what? Okay, I will take it like this. Alan is insane on guitar. So I'm going to interpret that into his fighting style. It would be like crazy ninja. 
But Roxy is my brother. He's, he's, I would never mess with this kid in a fight. I'm sorry, Alan would be obliterated. Alan, I love you. Don't ever fuck with me. <laughs> it all stems from a song Roxy wrote that before I, like, we ever started the band, he had this one line in it. And he's, he said right in the song, he's like, I know Kung Fu. And the minute I heard that, I was like, I must know Kung Fu. It's true. Truth. I can't say that to people where they think I'm trying to be Keanu Reeves or some stupid Everything stuff like that. I do, do it for you. That's actually my favorite ballad of all time. Brian Adams, high five. Oh, yeah. He makes like 80% of all Canadian royalties every year. Truth. Google it. What, what is your favorite dessert to eat together? One, two, three. Whiskey! Oh, we said yes! Yeah, man. Ow! Ah, oh, sorry. And I'm TJ Roger from Overmind.com. Before these two hurt themselves, we're out. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I think we killed <laughs> <Yeah>. Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Coast West Brofest. Hopefully mm -hmm. there's many more. As long as it's a Thursday. Let me give a shout out to my mom. Shout out to my aunt. I'm on TV! I'm on TV! Who the f was that? Yeah. I think it was a homeless guy. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and that again is part of Secret Revolution. That just happened. Yeah. Alright, next question. <laughs> What's going oh, no. on here? <laughs>